I've realized I'm weird. I'm especially weird when it comes to food. This is a picture of my kitchen cabinet. It sort of looks like I'm hosting a gathering for a chocolate fictional characters. I'm not. <laughs> and no, I'm not super prepared for Easter. This bunny's been up here for almost a year. <laughs> what else makes me weird? I scrape out every last grain of rice from a bowl I eat. I spend extra time chopping around the end of an onion. And I must have smelt the milk in my fridge at least six times this morning to see if I could still drink it versus having to pour it down the sink. I wish I knew why I did all these things. It's certainly not because I didn't have enough to eat as a kid. Instead, I don't know, I feel some sort of obsessive obligation to be mindful of the food I eat, to respect where it came from, and to not waste any of it unnecessarily. To me, food is sacred. Which is why when I found out about the amount of waste that still exists, I was heartbroken. I found that the equivalent to $165 billion is thrown away in the US every year from food that is otherwise completely edible. $165 billion? Imagine what else we could do with all this money. This led me to ask, where on earth does all this food waste come from? And the answer is sadly from pretty much everywhere. It starts in the fields. Consumer demand may change from when crops are planted to when they're harvested, which means that stores and distributors no longer want all the food that's been grown. Often this can't find a new home at short notice and is left to rot unharvested in the fields. Once harvested, food is taken to facilities where it's sorted. Here, estimates vary, but between 20 and 50% of all produce is simply discarded due to blemishes or being misshapen. Now, I don't know about you, but once a carrot is cut up in my salad or a strawberry is blended in my smoothie, I don't know and I certainly don't care what it started looking like. <laughs> Pausing here for just a moment, the fact that so much of our beautiful fresh produce is simply thrown away because it's ugly, not only astounds me, but it also angers me. Luckily, I'm not the only one who is completely outraged by this, and there are startups that will rescue these apparently ugly vegetables from going to the landfill and will send them to your door instead. Check out imperfectproduce.com if you too are not judgmental about how your mashed potato started looking. <laughs> Continuing our journey through the food distribution system, we've reached the cities where the food is set to be sold and hopefully eaten. Here, some goes to restaurants and the rest to grocery stores. And unsurprisingly, food waste exists here as well. But this is the step where you and I, everyday consumers, can have a daily impact. Let's start with restaurants. A little fun fact to insert here is that I'm British, and one of my favorite things about moving to the US is the fact that all restaurants, no matter how fancy or cheap, will have to-go containers. The fact that I love to-go containers and the associated leftovers Really shouldn't surprise you at this point. As you know, I'm weird with food. But even for me, there are some times and some dishes that I just don't want to have again or don't keep well. As a show of hands, how many people have thought about taking food home from a restaurant but decided that they didn't like it enough to want to bother? And then for those of us who have brought food home with the best intentions of eating it, how many of you have ended up throwing these leftovers away uneaten? Yeah, this happens to me a bunch too. I guess it comes with the territory of taking pretty much everything with me. Fundamentally, I believe that the mass prevalence of to-go containers connects with one of my less favorite things, the portion sizes in the US. And I don't want to give the impression that this is an issue unique to the US, but with us millennials eating out more often than any generation before us, 
we ought to be more aware about how much food waste we generate from restaurants' hearty portion sizes. Shifting now to think about food waste in the home, I'd like to share another story with you all. Not long after coming to business school, I decided I was going to start snacking healthier. So I bought a big multi-pack of yogurt. Unfortunately, chips or chocolate were always far more appealing to me than the yogurt in my fridge. So as the expiration date started looming towards me, I realized there was no way I was going to be able to eat it all. But what was I to do? We're taught as children not to accept candy from strangers. No person in my apartment building was going to want yogurt from the random girl down the hall. Eventually, the expiration date passed, and I begrudgingly picked up the yogurt that was left and flinched at the thump it made when it hit the bottom of my trash can. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you all most likely have had experience throwing away food that's not too dissimilar to this. But I'd like to rewind to the part in my story where I thought it would be too weird to give the yogurt away. Why is that so weird? That shouldn't be weird. And as it happens, a lot of people don't think it actually is. There's a startup, Olio, that facilitates peer-to-peer -peer sharing of food. At this time, they've shared over 400,000 food items and have an exceptional marketplace clearance rate. What this means is that people want free food and they're prepared to accept it even from a stranger. The issue that Olio has found is as much as we're prepared to accept food, we tend not to think of food that we no longer want as something that others may still value. What I've realized we need to do is reframe the concept of sharing food. We live in a sharing economy. We share our apartments with strangers through Airbnb. We share our cars with others through Uber and Lyft. Why not share our leftover or unwanted food with neighbors and friends? The second thing we need to do is be more honest with ourselves about how much food waste we actually generate and how we can be a part of the solution. No one likes to think that they're a problematic waster. And it's much easier to think that the issue of food waste is so big that there's nothing we can do as individuals to impact it. But I'd like to challenge this concept. I'd like you to think about the other issues that seem too big for individual action to matter. Recycling, energy consumption and climate change, even civil rights movements. Yes, there is more that we can do in each of these areas, but we've seen the cultural shifts that have happened surrounding them. And they all started with individual actions that combined have been effective. What I hope to leave you all with today is a greater understanding for the food distribution system and the associated waste that goes along with it. I hope I've given you insights that make you pause. Appreciate the food you have a little more and perhaps think about ways that you can reduce your own food waste. Maybe, just maybe, I'll have persuaded some of you to start being as weird with food as I am. Join me, let's all be weird together and make weird the new normal. Thank you.